I'll be teaching on the topic raised up with him raised up with him just as a final charge raised up with him in the course of this conference we discussed a number of things just a very quick recap on them number one I started by teaching us that there are foundational pillars as far as salvation is concerned there are a number of truths that we must know if we are to genuinely walk in the resurrection power and I told us that there are four faces to salvation four faces to the gospel number one the revelation of the humanity of Jesus number two his death number three his burial number four his resurrection and I even added one more his ascension and glorification that all of these facets must be captured in your understanding of salvation hallelujah and then yesterday night we consider the implication of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. How that if we are to experience the power that comes with his resurrection, according to Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. We discussed a few implications of the resurrection. Number one, we said the resurrection was a validation indeed that Jesus was and is the Son of God. According to Romans chapter 1, 2 and 4, that he was declared to be the Son of God by the Spirit of holiness and even through the resurrection from the dead. Number two, that the resurrection gave credibility to every other word that Jesus had spoken. He said he will come back to life and when he did come back to life, it gave us the credence to believe every other thing he has said. If Jesus did not resurrect, there would be no basis for believing any other thing he had said. Are we together? Number three, we said that the resurrection today has become the centrality of the gospel. The gospel does not just end at the humanity of Jesus, nor his death, nor his burial, but that he rose again. In fact, the Bible says... That his rising again is the basis for our justification. Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10 says, If you believe with your heart the Lord Jesus, and you confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Number four, we said the resurrection established the victory of Christ over sin, over Satan, over death and the grave. The resurrection did not just um, establish defeat over Satan alone, nor sin alone. Are we together? Sin, Satan, death and then the grave. And we did say that anyone, the resurrection has allowed anyone who believes in Jesus today to be a partaker of his life. And I'll talk a bit about that today. And finally, yesterday, we concluded by understanding revelation, the revelation of the resurrection to be that it gives every believer in Christ hope beyond death and hope beyond the grave. The revelation of the resurrection means that whether in life as we know or in death, we stand victorious. The blessed hope beyond the grave, the blessed hope beyond death. Now very quickly for this morning, I want us to go straight to Ephesians chapter 2. In nature, the children of wrath, even as others. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but God who is rich in mercy... For his great love where it he loved us even when we were dead in sins. Watch this now. Had quickened us together with Christ. For by grace ye are saved. And had raised us up together. Say together. So we were quickened together. Raised up together. And made us to sit together in heavenly places. 
that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness to us word who believe we'll stop there so the bible tells us paul was speaking and when we read ephesians chapter 1 it was essentially a revelation of christ's exalted position on account of his substitutionary sacrifice on account of his finished work paul takes the time to explain to us the extent of his exaltation are we together when we get to chapter 2 paul now connects us to all of that victory that he explained in chapter 1 i did tell us yesterday and i want you to please take note of this the most important aspect of redemption is not just the victory that came with the resurrection but who jesus won it for i need to say this the most important aspect of the resurrection is not just that jesus defeated sin satan uh, death and the grave is who he won it for are we together now man was all the time the object behind all of that sacrifice he did not do it for himself i did emphasize yesterday that everything jesus later got by conquest he had it already as god but he had it alone man could not partake of it in that state and so to show his love for man he relinquished himself of everything he had and went through the journey again this time around with man in covenant so that everything he now had we had the legitimate ground to be partakers of his divine nature are we together the bible says according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us into glory and virtue the next verse says whereby are given to us great and exceeding exceeding great and precious promises that by them we might be partakers of his divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust so jesus died jesus rose again but not just for himself he rose again to bring us into that position and this is what paul is explaining to the church in ephesus that we are not just to be conscious of the victory of christ in terms of him resurrecting alone but that we must know that we have become partakers raised up with him quickened together exalted together seated together at the right hand of God this is profound you believe that shout aloud amen so Ephesians chapter 1 talks about the exaltation of Jesus Ephesians chapter 2 talks about the identification of the saints in and through the exaltation of the Christ now what does this mean what is the meaning of all this to us now listen carefully Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 Romans chapter 6 and verse 4 I need to read that scripture and then I establish one or two things and we're done Romans 6 and verse 4 here's what the Bible says therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we should walk in the newness of life. The implication, watch this now, the implication of our identification with Christ today is that there is a demand upon all the saints to walk in what the Bible calls the newness of life. The newness of life is the implication of our identification with Christ in his victory. That means if you do not walk in newness of life you are proving through your life that our identification with christ is a lie there has to be newness of life that emanates from you and i'm going to be explaining to you what the bible means by the newness of life hallelujah there are two dimensions to the newness of life number one is called a new way of thinking 
And then number two, a new way of living. When the Bible talks about the newness of life, there is a mandate on every believer that if it is true that you believe that Jesus died, if it is a fact that he rose again, defeating sin, Satan, death, and the grave, there is a demand upon you. Are we together now? To walk in what Paul calls the newness of life. And I'm saying that the first dimension to the newness of life is a new way of thinking. Say after me, a new way of thinking. Shout it loud and clear. Say a new way of thinking. Colossians chapter 3, please. We'll read from verse 1 to 4. Colossians chapter 3 from verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, If then ye be risen with Christ, if it is true that you are risen with Christ, it says, Seek those things which are above, where Christ seated at the right hand of God. It says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. It says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then we shall also appear with him in glory. So the Bible says, if it is true that you are risen with Christ, there has to be an alteration to your thinking. Your consciousness has to be altered by the Spirit. Now, there are many people who claim they are walking in resurrection power. The average believer will not doubt the fact that redemption where a fact is a fact but we do not see that captured in our life the expression of the newness of life as a new way of thinking we still think in a very defeated way we still have a consciousness of servitude and subjugation to elemental powers demons principalities and so on and so forth if then ye be risen with christ the Bible says, set your affection on the things above and not the things of the earth. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. In fact, 17 and 18. The Bible says in verse 18, it says, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their hearts. Notice that the moment salvation affects your spirit, the next place it goes to is your thinking. The quality of your thinking is what determines your walking into the experience of the victory that is in Christ. The Bible emphasizes the health of the mind and the consciousness of the believer. There is a way you can think that aborts the reality of the resurrection power in your life. Hallelujah. Newness of life means a new way of thinking. The consciousness of a victorious life. That yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That all things work together for the good, not of everybody, of them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purpose. That a thousand shall fall by my side and ten thousand by my right side, but none shall hurt me. Are we still together? It says, with my eyes shall I behold the reward of the wicked. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? The Lord is the strength of my life. That though my beginning be small, yet my later end shall greatly increase. Listen, there is a frame of thinking that the believer must have to walk in the experience of victory. As powerful as the Holy Ghost is and was in the life of Jesus, there was a state of thinking. The Bible says, let this mind, Philippians 2 and verse 5, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. There was a way that Christ taught. There was a way that he conditioned his thinking and his consciousness. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. The assignment of the God of this world is to blind the minds of believers. He puts a cloud upon your mind. Are we together? Such that in spite of the reality of this that has been finished in Christ according to scripture, many still live defeated lives. Can I tell you? Victorious living comes from victorious thinking. Victorious living 
comes from victorious thinking. I will emphasize it one last time. Victorious living comes from victorious thinking. And because Satan understands this, he will create things around your life that seems to negate the integrity of God's word and use them to tell you if it is true that you are risen with Christ, if it is true that you are one with Christ, if it is true that you have a positional advantage, why are these things happening to you? And then the carnal man will say it's true. You reduce yourself to a realm where it becomes impossible to walk in victory. Lay your hands on your head in one minute and say, Father, one more time, shout it, say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I contend for transformation. I contend for renewal. Pray that prayer in one minute. I contend for transformation. I contend for renewal. There's need to be an alteration in my thinking. I reject thinkings of defeat. Everything that is inconsistent with the victory of Christ. I challenge it by the power of the Holy Spirit. Whatsoever is born of God overcome the world. If that whatsoever is household of David, once it is born of God, it overcome the world. If what, whatsoever a member, a businessman, a man of God, once you are born of God, the Bible says the capacity to overcome is there. Rejoice not over me, my enemies, though I fall, yet I will rise again. There is a seed, an incorruptible seed. As a result of the resurrection power, I'm speaking to someone here. Perhaps things have gone down in your life. Perhaps your children have gone down and you are asking, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Do not downplay the power that raised Christ from the dead. If it took him from Hades to the earth, from the earth to the throne, that power can take you from anywhere to anywhere. Anywhere to anywhere. Hear me? But it depends on the quality of the consciousness that you have. Your pastor, in spite of all that has happened, he refused to look not at the things that are, but the things that are to come. He shelved it with the confidence of a matured believer and began to move forward. This is why we are gathered here. Pastor Shola had the legitimacy to say, you know what? This has happened. Cancel the conference. I need some time to get my mind back. And it would have still been justified. But the excellency of a transformed mind. By this, somebody needs to go back to that business that has died. You have cried for too long. Go back again. Master, we have toiled all night. Nevertheless, at your word. Now that you have received words all through the week about the resurrection power, don't waste it. Change your thinking. Let the mockers mock while you rise. The truth died but only died for three days and it came back to life. Don't talk about the Jesus that is dead when there is a Jesus that is exalted now. Don't talk about the business that was dead whereas the resurrection power has brought it back to life. Your thinking. Lay your hands again one more time on your head and say in the name of Jesus, the thoughts of defeat, the thoughts of death, I come against it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Someone is praying. Challenge it in my life, in my health, in ministry. He died and rose again, giving me that victory. I declare I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and for wonders. Go ahead and pray. I overcame. Hey. Hallelujah. He won the victory. Hallelujah. I overcame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He won the victory. Hallelujah. I overcame. I overcame. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. After church today, if I were you, I will not only go and get the messages together, I will go and write the list of the 10 foundational thought patterns in my mind. And if I find them antichrist, that becomes my next project. I will not think this way again. I will not think this way again. So that defeated person is not the defeated person. Jesus, no, 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 no. Don't accept that nonsense. There are ways I will never think about myself. No, 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 no. You need to begin to think like Christ. I am a blessing, not a curse. Say it. One more time. Say it. Say, I am above and not beneath. Honestly, you need to believe this. If you don't believe it, you will never rise. This is not just some Pentecostal gibberish. This is how the kingdom functions. Jesus himself said he would die, but he would come back to life. If he kept quiet, he wouldn't have come back to life. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Not just wish so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Exalted of the Lord say so. Anointed of the Lord say so. Philemon 1 verse 6 says that the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. The acknowledging, acknowledging, acknowledging in the name of Jesus, the path of the just that describes me is as a shining light. I will never have a better yesterday in my life. Never have a better yesterday. It says, as your days are, so shall your strength be. Don't tell me the older I get, the more I should deplete. That is not the economy of heaven. It says, they that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Have you removed that from your Bible? It says, in old age, you shall be fat and flourishing. Seeing then that you are risen with Christ, household of David, body of Christ, set your affection, your thinking. It is true that economically, people have been challenged. And we sympathize with as a nation and as a people but in the name of jesus my faith delivers my portion my faith delivers my portion this is the victory the bible says that overcometh the world even our faith that when men say there is a casting down for me it is that there is a lifting up do you believe that your thinking you need to leave this conference with a renewed mind this is what you need to live with in the name of Jesus I am not weak I am strong I may not have a job yet in Lagos but in the name of Jesus the increase of the earth is for all and even the king is fed from that which comes from the field that means there is a portion for me by the power of the holy spirit you invoke the resurrection power in the name of jesus where my father could not go where my mother could not go my entire siblings are depending on me perhaps the only one who is saved in my lifetime i will demonstrate the excellency of what partnership with jesus means this is how to think I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious. I have overcome. Let me tell you this. Honestly speaking, this is my Bible, and I sincerely believe the truth of God's word that is written here. I don't read my Bible because I'm a preacher. When I read here that thou shalt be exalted above all the nations of the earth, I believed it. You see, you don't have an advantage 
outside of the word of God. Anybody who claims to give you any leverage outside of the word of God is only deceiving you. Because vain is the help of man, I tell you. Vain is the help of man. Let this mind be in you. God will use men to lift you. God will use men to bless you. There are some of you who do not believe the words of Jesus. But you are there crying and say, oh God, but my uncle said you will help me. My dear one, let me give you a kind advice so that you will live longer than you are trying to deplete yourself from now. Take your mind away from your uncle and look unto Jesus. The Bible says they looked unto him and their faces were lightened. There are 8 billion people on earth and God can use anybody, including your uncle. If your uncle says no, when God says yes, he will find a man who will still say yes. I'm saying this, let this be the year that you experience victory indeed. Are we together now? You're thinking. When people come around you and they are gossiping and making all kinds of negative, politely smile them away and leave. you are protecting your mind. You are guarding your understanding. Don't program a defeated life. No. Have you seen everything that is happening in this country? Will we survive at all? And the devil is waiting for you to participate in that conversation. I live a victorious life. I live a victorious life. When you speak over household of David, Pastor Paul, you said something yesterday was, that was so profound. He said, get the picture of a bond building out of your mind. Have you done that already? Every time you look at household of David, don't look at a building that was gutted by fire. No, no. Look at a brand new building. That picture, if you don't have it, get it and put it before you. And say, this is where we are going to. This one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth over the things that are before me he said i press i press i press let me give you the final one and we're done is someone getting blessed already so the resurrection power brings us into the reality of the newness of life the first dimension is the quality of your thinking victorious word compliant thinking and then the next dimension to the newness of life is a new way of living. A new way of living. Let me read for you Ephesians 4 from verse 17. Please lend me your attention as I read. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 17. Ephesians 4 from verse 17 here's what the bible says this i say therefore and testify in the lord that ye henceforth walk not as other gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having the understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart watch this now who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness to walk all on cleanliness with greediness but you have not so learned christ he's teaching god's people how to live now if so be that you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in jesus that you put off now pay attention put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness wherefore putting away lying speak every man truth with his neighbor for we are members of one another watch this now he says be angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath neither give place to the devil let him that stole steal no more but rather let him labor walking with his hands the thing which is good that he may give to him that needed then he says let no corrupt communication he's teaching you how to live now 
proceed from your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace to the hearers and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption two more verses let all bitterness and wrath and anger clamor and evil and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another tender-hearted forgiving one another even as god for christ's sake has forgiven you shout a loud amen he's teaching you how to live that the resurrection power imparts a grace upon you that biologically you cannot have are we together the grace to love even the unlovable the grace to forgive the grace to be void of anger and bitterness let me tell you the truth the the reality of the victorious life must be seen in your life practically here and now if you still hate now the way you were before you were saved what then is the value if you still walk in the limitations that you still had yesterday all the character challenges you had yesterday after 10 years 20 years they are still there again what then is the value are we together it matters how you live now that you have the newness of life and the bible begins to describe it that you must speak right hallelujah don't go around cursing and insulting people and then praying in tongues and saying that's how we are in all our family in fact i'm the least you've not had my elder ones that's why what you need is the resurrection power you who ordinarily if someone is talking you just keep quiet and the next thing the person is is a slap but now the resurrection power has worked upon you and you can calm down in the midst of storms and people look at you and say this is not you and you say you are right this is not me this is christ living in me the me before will give you a slap for sure but now christ are we together can i tell you i know that we are transiting and we are growing but truly if you are a believer and you are not changing in character if what the bible calls the fruit of the spirit is not progressively finding expression in you are we together then you are not allowing the resurrection power work in you i hope you know the resurrection power is not just for signs and wonders it is also an empowerment for christ-like living it is impossible to live like christ in this annoying bedeviled world without the empowerment of the spirit someone looks at you in your office and says if by next week you are still in this office then let me even die that's how determined he is to remove you and you say okay you will now know the village i come from and you get and people start acting as though they are not saying uh -uh. christ like living that when people see you listen if the resurrection power is at work in you let me submit to you with all due respect people should not just see you and say ah you look like a yoruba man you look like an Igbo man you look like a house salmon, a South Southerner. You have been so immersed in a new culture, a new life. They will not even be able to trace you to any joke because the only place they can trace you coming from is heaven. You have been so transformed that it is difficult. They ask you, where are you coming from? And you say, I'm from so, so, so place. And the person steps back and says, it's not true. The people from this place that I know, this is not how they behave. You say, you are right have been crucified with christ nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and this life that i live today in the flesh that is the body i live by the faith of the son of god do you believe what you're hearing christ-like thinking and christ-like living you get up in the morning and you greet people courtesy value good morning sir and they say you you say yes me what happened I came to household of David a conference for about five days and I became transformed I have learned about the resurrection power and I'm allowing it to change me from inside out come on now change from inside out the way you speak the way you act you now become empathetic you see someone crying 
You don't leave them and say, that's your business. No. What is wrong? Is there a way I can help? Even if I cannot give you money, can we pray? By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. Not when you pray in tongues. Are we together? Not just when you perform miracles. When you have love. Here's how the Bible puts it. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The fellowship, koinonia, of the Holy Spirit. It says to abide with you forever. Let me wrap up. No matter how much of a miracle worker you are, no matter how much of a sign producer you are, if the character of the Christ, and when I talk about the character of the Christ, in one word, it is love. Then in all its expressions, you call it the fruit of the Spirit. Can I tell you the truth? The distinguishing factor between a believer and an unbeliever is not just signs and wonders. Now, many have aligned to receive the resurrection power in terms of its charismatic manifestation. Miracles, signs and wonders. But when you come close to their lives, you don't find Christ. There is no victorious Christ-like thinking. There is no victorious Christ-like living. God is calling us right now in addition to the charismatic dimension of the resurrection power that you must allow that power to walk in you inside out love joy peace patience in the midst of storms you are unperturbed stability by the spirit credited to the resurrection power are we together now when you hear a sad news you who would panic before you are in perfect peace because he keepeth his bones and none is missing. An unusual manifestation. Ordinary men would not walk like that. But this is the excellency of the resurrection power. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Lives in me. Just hear me sing this two times and we stand. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me i like this part your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me can you join me singing one time? Same power. Please rise on your feet. Lives in me. Lives in me. Your love. Your love. That rescued me. Lives in me. Lives in me. By this teaching this morning, I want you to declare no more hate. No more unforgiveness. No more jealousy. No, no more pride. It is gone in the name of Jesus. This is a new man. I came to church an old version of me. Now I have allowed the resurrection power to walk from inside out. From inside out. Transforming me. Imparting grace upon my life. But changing me from inside out. The angry person that came is not the angry person going back. The jealous person that came is not the envious, bitter person going. I am joyful, full of the Holy Ghost. Full of the Holy Ghost. This is what it means to be raised up with Christ. Hear me? We are not just raised up into signs and wonders. We are not just raised up into supernatural manifestations. We are raised up into a new life. A life that can only be seen in heaven. You are importing heaven's life on earth. Regardless your tribe, regardless your background, I'm going to lead you to pray two prayers as we close. Prayer number one, Father, everything in my life that does not reflect the workings of the resurrection power, I yield myself. Let it leave now. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. The Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside two things number one 
every weight. Number two, the sin that doth easily beset us. And then it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the Bible says, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despised the shame. That everything that is not Christ-like in me, let it be driven away by the resurrection power that is in Christ. Everything, anger, bitterness, lust, let it go. Unforgiveness, let it go. Over my dead body, let that statement leave me. It will never, never be part of my life again. This is what it means to be a child of God, purged from the inside out. Prayer point number two. Every blessing that came with the resurrection, it must begin to show in my life right now. Go ahead and pray. Every blessing, every blessing. Ephesians 1 and verse 3, that God had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us blessings and honor and riches and power and strength. Go ahead and pray. Every blessing that came with the resurrection, it begins to show in my life. It begins to speak in my life. Someone is praying. 